Hi everyone, welcome. It's Joni at Granny J. Clay and I just wanted to teach you how to do a Sutton Slice this morning. I did a video on this hmm, oh my, uh, a few years back and I just wanted to show you um, another um, technique and I wanted to kind of update my last video that I did on it. So um, this is what I wanted to show you. <clears throat> this is a Sutton Slice and I used a texture sheet to impress this, uh, well, it's a mixture of purple and pearl clay. It was pretty marbled, and so I just kept it marbled. And uh, when I did that, I pushed it into a texture mat. Not this one, but this is, I'm gonna use part of this mat today uh, to show you what to do. But um, you can use any mat that has depth. Maybe you can see that there's depth in that. So you can push some clay down into it. Uh, today I'm going to push down some of our pro, my pearl clay into it. And uh, then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna push it onto my beautiful uh, purple purple clay that I've got laying here. And this, this is the souffle. Uh, and I just love it. It feels like velvet. <laughs> it feels just like velvet. And I haven't been using it uh, very much lately, so I thought I would use it. When I got done with this I, and, uh, and this one, let me put it down here. And this, um, then I took all of the scraps from this and I rolled out a piece of translucent clay. And when I got that laid out, I just pulled the scraps and just pieced them piecemeal onto the translucent clay. And then I took, um, oh, let's see, a piece of the patty paper and I laid it on top of that and I just burnished and burnished all those little scraps and pieces onto the translucent clay. I wanted to leave enough, uh, let's see here if I can show it to you. Here's uh, here's a piece that I have not resined yet. This one I've resined, this one I have it. So maybe you can see. I wanted to leave it um, protruding up a little bit. So it sort of looked like a stone. And then when I come in with the resin, that all fills in. But, um, just wanted to show you that and I'll put this over here so let's just get to it I'm going to move my purple clay for the moment over here these pieces I'll move out of the way as well and I'm not like I said I'm not going to use this whole mat today but I will use um, a part part of it to show you this has uh, flowers leaves and so forth I'm just tearing off my <coughs> excuse me I'm tearing off my pearl clay and pressing it in and pressing it in pretty well kind of spreading it out and pressing it in like that. And then I'm going to take my blade and I'm going to shear that off of there. And as you can see, isn't that pretty? It also leaves a pretty um, print on your clay. You can save this and make something out of that as well. But I'm not going to do that today. And then I'm just going to take this piece that I just shaved and I'm going to put it right next door to the piece on the texture mat that I just shaved off. And then I'm gonna just do this, <clears throat> excuse me, for as long as I want to. I could do the whole thing, but I don't want the whole thing. I'm just gonna do this part right here, a little part of this, but I wanna make sure I get all of it. <clears throat> excuse me, I was, I'm kind of, got a horse today in my throat. <laughs> Anyway, I was going to tell you a little bit about this. Lisa Pavelka is um, an extraordinary uh, clay maker. She makes beautiful things out of clay, and she came up with this Sutton Slice idea. She actually had a friend whose name was Pete Sutton, and she showed him how to do a certain other technique. And um, when he tried it, he ended up leaving clay in... He was frustrated because the clay kept sticking back into these recessed areas. And Lisa, when she um, came over and saw that, she thought it was really beautiful. And so she um, took that a little bit further and made uh, made what I'm doing today. She turned it into what she called the Sutton Slice, which I thought that was very kind of her because... Um, he kind of discovered it by accident, but she took it a little bit further. And if you go to Fire Mountain Gems on YouTube, um, you can see videos of her, of Lisa Pavelka, 
doing this. And she does it much more thoroughly than I do. Okay, so as you can see, when you shear some of that off, you can just place it back on and you keep shearing it. And it continues, continues to reveal the pattern. And sometimes you have to go back over it because the clay will stick to these protruding parts too and you, you don't want that to happen. I'll just get a little bit more of that. Sutton Sice is, is fun to do, but like I said, you have to have a texture mat or sheet or something that has uh, some deep recesses to it so you can push the clay into it so it will, the clay will stay. So let me just shave this off a little bit. I'm sitting here thinking of Hawaii because our oldest son is on Maui right now. Oh, we've been over there a couple times. Just love that. Oh, I just love it. Um, and I know he made plans a long time ago to do that. So um, he was able to go to a luau, etc. I guess for a while they weren't having luau's over there, you know, during COVID. We have a neighbor that moved here uh, from Hawaii and probably will be moving back eventually. He's in the service and he's here in Kansas going to school uh, at the request of the service. Um, that he's in, and then he will go back, be stationed back, I think, again in Hawaii. Anyway, he said during COVID, it was just really bad over there. Uh, you couldn't go out on hikes. They didn't want you to go to any of the beaches. So, <laughs> I, that wouldn't be fun. That's kind of what you want to go to Hawaii for, right? You want to be able to for sure go to a beach. There's a beach over there called Big Beach over in Kihei, which is a beautiful area, just so pretty. We like to go to that one. Okay. Let's just put this on here. Let's see if I can finish this little area up here. That might be actually enough. Um, we'll see. I think it will be. Do you see how easy that is just to kind of scrape off? But this pearl clay is very, very soft. Let me bring you down just a little bit so you can see better. It's very soft, which is wonderful because um, it pushes in easily. And it doesn't have too much drag when you want to scrape over it. So uh, that's good, too. And then it doesn't come out of those areas. All right, I think that's going to be pretty good. Make sure it's all down there really nicely. Now, I didn't put a backing on this. I didn't texture the back. Uh, I think I'm going to bring this in and roll this out and make a backing from that. But let's just see how this goes. I'm going to flip this over now, just this part. Oh, you know what? I can just do this. Lay it there. And then what I'm going to do is flip this over. You could do it either way. What does this say? Cool Tools. That's where I got this, at Cool Tools. Sorry, I bumped that. Uh, I haven't shopped online at Cool Tools for a long time. Need to check them out again. I bet they've got some new things there. So I'm trying to push it really hard. Sometimes I will push from the other side, uh, from the clay side, but um, then I'll have to flip it back over again because I want to be able to remove the mat and see what's going on. And you know what? I think I'm going to have to lift this up with my straight blade a little bit. Get it off here. A little bit. Okay. So I want you to be see to see it. I'm sorry I wasn't in view as well as I should have been. All right. Now I'm just going to check it and see how the pearl clay did, if it's gonna come out or not after that pressing and pushing. So I'm just gonna take a corner and I'm gonna start rolling it back. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Can you see it? And then you can still push back here with your fingers, but once you get the mat turned over, you can push down with the mat too. And if you see any significant clay in the texture mat, then just roll it back, push down because it hasn't moved that's pretty. Yeah, that's 
that's releasing pretty well. I just push down again and again and again. Okay. All right. So that's how that came out of there. I see we have a little bit left in there, but that's that's not too bad. So how pretty is that? And then I'm going to pull it up. And I'm going to trim it off a little bit. And so again, this is called the Sutton Slice. It's really a neat te technique, isn't it? Um, instead of using ink or something, or Prolex powders or whatever, I'm going to get that side off too because I don't want to use it. You can just push clay into the, mat, the texture mat and use just clay. Oh, I think that is lovely. Let me bring you down just a little bit more to see it. There you go. I think that's lovely. Now, like I said, I don't have anything on the back because I'm going to create a texture mat, uh, uh, a texture sheet, and put it on the back of this. So let's just do that. I'm going to have to roll through the machine. So bear with me. Now, my husband ran to the lumber yard to get a little bit more wood. Uh, he finished three sections of. of uh, our storage unit off down here made three shelves with I think there's four shelves for each anyway it's great um, but he's gonna make one more and so he may be coming through pretty soon let me just roll this through okay I rolled that through on a one I'm gonna see if that'll fit it will and I'm going to grab <coughs> to grab a texture mat here. <clears throat> I think I'm going to use this one. This isn't the finest one. It's kind of the mediocre middle one. So I'm going to lay that there, run it back through. And you know what? I'm going to bring you back out a little bit. There. Okay. <laughs> okay. I did run it through. Now I want to flip it over because I want to put this on top of the part that is not textured because I want to make sure this whole area is textured. And then I'm just going to take off that. <coughs> Excuse me. Seems like when I haven't talked for a while at length, I start talking, I get a um, frog in my throat or something. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> now again, I'm just going to push down on that a little bit. And I'm going to move this over. Isn't that pretty? That's pretty. And then the back is like that, so it has texture on it. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to bring in a piece of my plastic wrap that I use. And the box I had it in, <laughs> so it's kind of like this. And I have to find the edge. Uh, just kind of crumpled on me the other day. I'm not sure why, but it did. And so I have to I have to find the edge again. So bear with me here. I think I've got it going. It takes a while. All right. I'll just use a little piece of it. Okay. I don't really need a big piece. So now you can make what you want out of this. Uh, necklace pieces, um, you know, really, it's up to you if you're gonna use a cutter. But uh, for me, I don't think I need any more decoration than what's on it because I think that pearl clay has really made it look pretty. What I'm trying to do here is straighten out this little piece that I tore off. I didn't mean to get such a little piece, but I did, so I'll use it. Okay. <clears throat> There we go. All right. I think what I'll do now, I may use my... Uh, I just think I'm going to make a, a, a circle, a round one. Let me see what I can bring in here. These are my Fat Daddy-O uh, plastic cutters and they don't have seams so when you push down it's wonderful that they don't have seams so this is 
this one in particular, this would make me a cabochon that is about one and a half inches in diameter. This one would make me a two inch, a two inch cabochon. And I think I'm gonna use this one. So this is what I'm gonna do here. Okay, let me just think about this a minute. Yeah, and I bring it over this way just a little bit if you can see what I'm doing. And I'll move these other ones out of the way. And then I give it just a little push to keep it there. And, and then I stand up and I've got my acrylic block and I put it over that. And you can see how it flips up the, the clay. And then I give it a little turn. So Let's see what we've got here. Oh, that's really pretty. Yeah, that's real pretty. All right. Take it off of there. And then I go around the edge and just make sure that we don't have anything funny going on here. Because the more you can do before you put it in the oven, the better. The back looks good. That looks good. So there we go. There is one cabochon uh, made from a texture sheet. And I made it um, with the Sutton Slice. So look up Lisa Pavelka. And she's at Fire Mountain Gems, at least she used to be. And I know she sells, she sells texture mats. She sells a lot of things. And so, or you can go to Cool Tools <laughs> and check their, their texture mats out too. But this is going to be very pretty uh, uh, for a necklace. Now what you could do if you wanted to, you could bring that paper back in again, or the plastic back in here again. And you could bring a smaller one in, and you could make a hole right there. In fact, I'm going to. I hate, honestly, I hate kind of to do it because it takes the pretty print away. Let's see, where should I do it that it's most? Maybe right there. Okay. And I'm going to put this back. And then I'm going to judge how far from the top I want that to be. And push down. That one was easy. I can just do it like that. And then pull this up. And again, I'm going to come back in and I'm going to release it. So that will be the necklace or the cabochon. Just rub it on the inside to make sure we don't have any funny edges. The more you can do to your piece before you put it in the oven, the better. Oh, that would make a cute cabochon. And now this can be an earring. And if that can be an earring, I'll need another one. So let me pull this in. And let's see, it'll probably go right there. And we'll make an earring out of that. That um, little piece of plastic stayed on. And that came up really easily, but if it doesn't, you can take a piece of scotch tape and pull it off. So, okay, let's see what these look like. Pretty. All right, that will be the cabochon. You can probably put a piece of leather or whatever you want on this, and then you'll have the earrings with it too. Let me put, bring this down a little bit so you can see it. There we go. There we go. Now, um, if I was going to make more that were similar to this, what I would do is I would get a piece of translucent clay out, which is it, it's fairly clear when it bakes. Um, but because I have a backing on it, you can't see through it. But that's the translucent. It just gives a different dimension to your piece. But if I want to do that, I would get the translucent clay out, and then I begin to pull pieces off of this and place them on the translucent clay. Then, once I was done, I would take my uh, patty paper. Let me move these pieces over. And now, pretending that we pulled this all apart and put it on a translucent, then I would take my patty paper and lay it on top, and I would begin to very gently and softly begin to um, burnish that. And then I would get another sheet of clay that I could 
uh, cut from, which would bring something, you know, similar to that. So that's my lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the Sutton Slice. And like I said, I've done this before, so I know you probably, and you've probably seen other people do it too. But I wanted to show you a couple of things that I, did, that I made. Um, I showed you that orange clay yesterday. Look what I made. I made a pumpkin. I'll move these out of the way, I guess. You see these cute little pumpkins? I made these out of uh, the other Sutton Slice. On the back is just, I pushed that same texture mat on a piece of black and so um, and didn't color it, except a little green got on the back when I put some uh, Prolax on the stems. But it made these cute little pumpkins and I thought they were so cute. So you don't have to just make jewelry, you can make other things. Uh, in fact, um, for so long I used to make uh, cabochons and earrings, cabochons and earrings, cabochons and earrings. Let me just bring that back out a little bit. And I got tired of that. I just got tired of making the same thing over and over. So, so I've been trying some new things and I hope you have enjoyed this little lesson on the Sutton Slice and I hope you try it too. But for now, I will just uh, leave you and God bless you as you go through the rest of your day or if you're about ready to go to bed, sleep well and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.